All right, so it's very clear that President Obama thought he could bully Republicans when it comes to tackling the so-called fiscal cliff problem. But as my next guest is about to, Republicans have a secret bargaining chip. Joining me now to explain what that leverage may be, Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert. You're never in New York. Good to see you, Congressman. Well, How are you? Good to be here. Um, the president just dumps all of this. It's not a realistic proposal. Sends tax cheat, although my friend Bob Woodward didn't like hearing it, uh, Geithner up, and none of it is realistic. It's not a serious yeah. proposal. Yeah, of course not. Okay. Now, we're about... And it was intended not to be a serious proposal. Explain. He and others really... It, this goes back to the debt ceiling debate a year and a half ago. It goes back to the continuing resolution debates right. over and over. They think that if there's a shutdown, they think that if we hit a debt ceiling, that they win a shutdown. And they really are pushing. They've been doing this for a couple of years, thinking, gee, we will win politically. We'll get back to House if we will just force this, make it so unpalatable the, the Republicans can't possibly agree to it. But we just then, had a campaign. Usually I there's understand. a moment you can govern for crying out loud. You would think now and, after the election, especially yeah. when the president that doesn't uh, have another election, as he said, but when it's the only thing you do well, you do what you do well, and that's campaign. Look, I would really, and I understand that the, there's going to be means testing, raising the eligibility age. I get it. I think I, I understand Except it. Except we cannot break promises to people who Agreed. have relied on our promises. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, we had promised, and Paul Ryan, uh, we had promised, if you're 55 or over, you have relied on Medicare and Social Security being there to your detriment. We can't do you wrong. But we have got to make it sure it's there for future generations. Now, as far as the, uh, the weapon we have, it's the debt ceiling. And that is why you had Geithner and, and the White House, they're saying, look, why don't we just have a uh, debt ceiling where we don't need congressional approval, it goes up whenever we want that's it to. Your that's, you, that's your role constitutionally. You bet it is. And Newt Gingrich was nailing this, one of the reasons I nominated him for speaker. I that guy that. knows what he's talking he about. But uh, that is it, and that is leverage. And some people say, look, guys, we don't have any leverage. Yes, we have leverage, just like Nu was talking about. No bill can get passed. No amount of money can get appropriated, not a dime, unless the House is part of it. That's leverage. And it is so important to the future of this country that we fix the entitlements so they're there for those who are counting on. It is so important that we fix the overspending that's going to turn us into Greece and Spain. You talk about it all the time, Sean. It is so important we do that that it, even if we don't get reelected, it is so important we do that for the country. I agree we need you. to use all the leverage we got, including the debt ceiling well, and appropriating. I, I, listen. We got, we're on our way to $20 trillion in debt. It's unbelievable. This becomes at some point unsustainable. This is beyond a fiscal oh, cliff. This is a fiscal dive into, uh, I don't even want to think where it could take us. Well, really, I, some would say if, you know, it, if the dollar were not the international currency, we would have already been Greece. Here, I brought up some ideas at the beginning of the program, and I, I said, okay, why don't we go for... 200 billion in discretionary cuts to start? Yes to entitlement for, reform, you agree? Yes yeah. to some tax, serious tax reform. Would you agree to that? Oh, do I ever? When, when the president says fair share, the perfect answer, flat tax. And he has not made one proposal that will have Warren Buffett paying the same thing as his secretary. A bunch of us do. It's called the capital gains is 15%. The income tax is 15%. You make more, you pay more. You make less, you pay less. Everybody pays their fair Same share. Same thing with the, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the uh, a value added tax after eliminating the tax, I think is a good idea. And I also like each one is progressive because the more you make, the more, the more, you, make, you, more you spend, the more people way it's get a flat tax. Yeah. And so when you hear fair share, think flat tax. Yeah. And I was talking to Steve Forbes about it and uh, Arthur Laffer yesterday. And uh, listen, this is what we ought to be doing. Where's the president then? Why the constant campaign? Because after every election, there is a period when actually things can get done, good things. I was saying this to Bob Woodward. One in six Americans are in poverty in this country. Mm -hmm. 50 million Americans on food stamps, 25 million un and underemployed. This, to me, is not a time to play games. It is. This is a time to exactly. try and get this country out of the right. out of the fiscal mess it's in. Right. Live within our means. That means really doing big things, touching entitlements, saving them from insolvency and bankruptcy. We don't put 
campaigning in Pennsylvania using well, class warfare? And it's even more egregious when you know we've had four deaths in Libya. What happened? How can we avoid that mistake in the future? And then when you go around the country and around East Texas and you see people hurting and they're really struggling and it's breaking their heart to make, make ends meet. So and this, you know we have more energy than anybody right. in the world and we're not using Last it. Question. It ought to be a renaissance Is this going to be go take us up to Christmas Eve or the day before? And all of a sudden, breaking news sounders all across the country, bells and whistles ringing, and then we're going to have a group of people come out, and we've struck a deal. And they're going to pat each other on the back, and they're going to tell us everything's been saved, and when we look at the, 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 the mm -hmm. devil in the details, it's not going to be that great, and they'll say, well, I thank the person from the other side, and I thank the person from the other side, and nothing's done. Is that a possibility? Well, historically speaking, and I think that's the best indicator of the future, that's exactly what's happened every time on the CRs, on the debt ceiling. Every time that's what's happened. So that would be a good indication, but we're told today, uh, prepare to be here between not only up to Christmas, between Christmas and New, New Year's. And, you know, that's fine with me. It's not fine it with is, me. That's my only time of vacation the well, whole year. You, but you don't I'm have to only worry kidding. about it. I'll no, be there. I mean, I'll be there. No, I mean, but if yeah. it's worth it. Like New Year's, I agree. About, it you is have worth people it. bleeding feet out there fighting for our liberty. What is it? So you give up a few holidays to, to try to save the country? Congress. We should do it. I, I think the president needs to get serious. And well, I think, he's not there. I think he needs to now sit down and stop sending his Treasury Secretary. Sit down with the Republicans. All right, good to see you. It's good to see you. And, and go easy on our campaigner in chief. Uh, it's you know what me. he does. It's what he does well. Coming up, she was at the state.